Hey guys, and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. Now, if you didn't watch my last video, then you may wanna go ahead and do that, but in case you're just wanting the sort of Cliff Notes version of that video, then basically today I'm benchmarking out a system that was traded straight up for another system. So I traded away a Ryzen 1200 system featuring an RX 580 four gigabyte GPU with eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM running at 2133 megahertz and in exchange for the Ryzen 1200 system I then got a Ryzen 2700 system featuring a GTX 970 and 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM except running at 3200 megahertz instead of the uh, 2133 megahertz of the 8 gigabytes from the Ryzen 1200 system so the rationale given again Cliff Notes version here was that the system I traded away was just really good looking and uh, the buyer thought that, or rather the trader, thought that uh, everything would be running just as smooth on that system. Apparently he's running some older games and that sort of thing. So the performance hit that he was taking, he wasn't overly concerned about. So I invested about 50 more dollars into adding an SSD, adding some nice pretty fans to the system. But we're gonna take a look at the performance of the new system, the Ryzen 2700 system. So uh, let's roll the intro and then and hop straight into those benchmarks. So of course, as we already mentioned, we have the Ryzen 7 2700 here paired with a GTX 970 and 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory running at 3200 megahertz. Now for Cinebench R20, this is really just looking at CPU performance. We have a single thread performance here of 411 and a score on the multi-threaded side of things at 3487. Now to simulate a more gaming type of a workload here, we have Unigen Superposition running at 1080p on high settings. We saw an average FPS here of 41, max and minimum numbers. I really don't even like those metrics. So the max here is 50 and the minimum is 34, but that average of 41 seemed to be pretty stable. Now Overwatch at ultra settings unsurprisingly gave a really, really nice performance here with an average FPS of 144 frames per second, 1% low there at 110 and a 0.1% low at 100 flat. This was a great experience. And yes, if you need more frames than 144 on average, you could drop down settings just a little bit, but frankly, I don't really see the purpose of that if you're a casual gamer or maybe you're just not overly competitive. Frankly, I like the smoothness plus the eye candy so 144 is a great combination of both in this instance. Metro Exodus on high settings with no tessellation at 1080p was very, very solid. We saw an average frame rate of 87. That 1% low did stay above 60 at 64 FPS. And then the 0.1% low there at 57 was also right there near that 60 mark. So this was a really good experience. If you're a 60 FPS gamer or better, then you will be happy with this result. The Resident Evil 2 remake at medium settings was much the same as Metro Exodus here, a very similar experience with an average FPS of 83, 1% low of 73, and a 0.1% low right there on the mark at 60 FPS. So again, if you're looking for 60 FPS or better in 1080p gaming, the GTX 970 and Ryzen 2700 pairing continues to hold up in this title. And the last title in our lineup today is The Outer Worlds at high settings at 1080p. And this continues to be a difficult title to run even with some modern hardware. The GTX 970 and the Ryzen 2700 gathered an average FPS of 67, a 1% low of 45, and a 0.1% low of 23. So not the greatest results here, but by dropping down settings a little bit, you could definitely boost those numbers to get the 1% and 0.1% lows much closer to that 60 mark. And because I'm a little bit concerned about this case in particular with this PC being that the front panel is so restrictive, I did run an IDA64 GPU and CPU simultaneous stress test. And in that test, I found a maximum temperature on the CPU of 58 and a GPU load temperature of 74. Now in some games, those things will be pushed a little bit more depending on whether you're hitting the CPU hard or the GPU, but all in all, the temperatures I'm very pleased with in this case. So there it is, guys. That is the Ryzen 2700 systems performance. Obviously at 1080p gaming, it is a really solid option moving forward for whoever ends up buying the system. And then at 1440, which I didn't test games at that, but it could run some older titles at 1440p though. That's definitely gonna be sort of restricted to those older, much less demanding titles.
titles or even newer titles that just happen to not be very demanding at all. For example, Minecraft, I'm sure would run just fine at 1440p on this system unless you're loading it up with an insane amount of mods and that sort of thing. But the system runs really, really well. I was actually really surprised with the thermals because the front intake of the chassis is actually pretty restrictive, but the thermals were all very much under control. And I have a feeling that's more down to the overkill solutions that were piled on. A, a stock Ryzen 2700 is not an overly hot chip, has a pretty solid air cooler on that. And then the Asus Strix GTX 970 also has a fairly nice cooler on top of that card as well, as well as just the brute force of using three fans to pull in air. Even if it's against the air's will, it's being pulled into the case and then being exhausted by those uh, the rear and top exhaust fans as well so airflow seems to be not really a big problem though if you were running a very hot GPU or CPU in this system I could definitely imagine it getting fairly toasty in there but Altogether, really, really solid 1080p gaming rig. I think I'm gonna be able to get a little bit more out of this system on the market than I was the Ryzen 1200 system. So hopefully this is a profitable endeavor on my side of things. But regardless, I do wanna know what you guys think of the finished Ryzen 2700 build, uh, the performance, things like that. Let me know all your thoughts on the build and also if you have a similar type of a, a PC that's lurking around your layer. Let me know all your thoughts down below. And of course, if you liked the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, subscribe and comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.